2005, 2011 and twice in the 2017-18 season. All times that I've seen Motherwell nearly won a cup. As a Motherwell fan of 24 years, it really would be the pinnacle to see a trophy donned in Claret and Amber. But thus far, it has eluded me. Will this year be the year? It's going to be tough. Join me tonight as Muller will take on Celtic in the Premier Sports Cup quarter-final. I think a big part of the reason that I've yet to see Muller win a trophy is that three times we ran into Celtic and once in 2005 we ran into Rangers. And it's safe to say, on a cup run, you need a wee bit of luck, don't you? And I don't think we've got you had that. So hopefully, that will change this year and we'll get maybe an easier run after tonight to the final. But with the financial gap rising in Scottish football due to the coefficient and Celtic and Rangers seeing more Champions League football, are Motherwell fans worried that the gap will grow wider and the chance of success will become thinner? If Celtic Rangers don't start using that money to improve, the coefficient will start slipping away, to be honest, because they're going into Europe every year, either getting 40 million quid in their pocket, it is going to make the gap bigger, but it's not going to last forever if they don't start taking their chance and making a go at in, in Europe. I know Rangers got to Europa League last year, it was a bit of a, a freak running results, they get quite a lot of luck, but to, to go into your point about no winning a cup, other teams have done it, surely we will do it at some point. I think that's a bugbear isn't it, that when Rangers were done in the World Leagues, you've seen the likes of St Johnston, Winning cups, Inverness winning cups. And I've been to four cup finals in my life, I think I've scored one goal. It's hard to say, I mean, yeah, the money's getting bigger for Celtic Rangers, but like, at, at my work recently we were talking about if they restructured the league and got the money more spread out, then it would give them a little more of a chance, but obviously the SFA are so one-sided to the old firm, then obviously, well, we're not going to get money, you're not going to get a chance, but it's a cup. Different things happen. Muller and this club especially has had different things happen. I mean, the 4 2 win in 91. Yeah. It's a cup game, anything can happen. And that's where you can beat the clubs like Celtic Rangers. No, because it, the gap's always been there. And it's always been at that. So I don't really think it makes a great deal of difference to us. We just have to cut a cloth to what we can do and hope for that wee bit of success when it comes. I think Celtic fans would be the first to argue that the gap that Motherwell experience here in Scotland is akin to that that they face when they go into the Champions League and face big sides in Europe. So, with the gap in Europe growing wider, are Celtic fans worried that they're in danger of becoming a Europa League side and the days of them seeing their side reach the last 16 of the Champions League may be a thing of the past? I, I, think, it's, I think it's a fair point. I, uh, in a lot of ways we are a Europa League team. Um, but you've still got to be in their fight, you've got to turn up. The game's played on the park. I think we've underperformed in the Champions League this season, for instance, against teams with bigger budgets than, than us. Two teams anyway that have bigger budgets for us. But you still expect to serve it up to them on the park. And I'm sure your point is they've had chances in their games, haven't you? Aye, no, de definitely chances. Eh, chances in all games that we've played. But the budget thing is a, po a good point. But then I point towards teams sort of like Club Bruges. Shakhtar Donetsk, we're making a go at it, drawn with Shakhtar, Drew Real Madrid, Hammond Leipzig in Germany. So you can, only, I think we, I can only talk about a Celtic point of view, we can use that excuse so far, but there is other teams in there with a much smaller budget and they are, they're putting performances in, they're qualified. Yep. So I think we've got to look at ourselves before we go at anything else. We, we constantly put out of Europe with teams with lower budgets than us, so you think of Bodo Glimpse and Copenhagen and stuff. So the last couple of years, so it does happen, you know. What I would say is that definitely, in terms of the standard of player we can attract, I would say we're definitely a Europa League team on that side of things. What I think now at Celtic is that, especially us as fans, that we'll never let that believe that ourselves, you know what I mean? We all always in our heart think we're going to be Champions League teams. But I think what this season has shown is that, although we have went up against Shakhtar, when we got the draw, Leipzig, we were in the game, Madrid were in the game, you always see about 60 minutes we fade away and I think that's the real difference between a Champions League team and a Europa League team is that these guys can go for the full 90, where Celtic can give you 45 minutes or in the game and then that standard just starts to come. So what I would say is that on the football inside of things, I would say we are 
a Europa League standard team, but it's not going to stop me believing that we can go beat Real Madrid and we can beat Shakhtar and that. So. I think I'm a wee bit disappointed with how the Champions League's went this year. Um, I think that looking into the group we probably could have done better than what we've done, you know what I mean? But obviously you look back at the missed chances, I'd like to think that we could probably do better in the Champions League, given the group that they got, but I probably, you know, Europa League guy would be nice to get at least that, but in the position we're in the new after this it's not look likely is it? Yeah I think it is quite a big gap so obviously we need to like it'd be good if like other clubs could fill in to try to keep with us. And um what would you like to see the board invest more and maybe how how you do that? Yeah I think it would be good if that could happen because then it would obviously mean it's only really like a two man race for the league now. There's no obviously between like us and Rangers. So it's a bit better. I think something that both sets of fans can agree on tonight is a kickoff time of 6.15 on a Wednesday night is atrocious. And TV companies for me have too much say on what goes on in football these days. So do both sets of fans agree with me and what would they do moving forward to stop that from happening? Definitely. What, what, would, you do, what would you do moving forward to, to connect that from the fans? I think that this, this has highlighted something where the, the TV companies and the league have not been in step because they know there's games at the weekend. They knew this was a week for this competition. I don't see why you've got quarter past six kickoffs now on a Wednesday. Play it on Thursday, move the game to the Sunday, whatever has to happen. It's just been a, it's a mess. I completely agree, and I think Motherwell and Celtic made it clear that they both requested to change the kickoff time, and it was not back, so I think it is disappointing. Um, I don't know, I don't really know off the top of my head how we can correct that, but no, something needs to be done because this is new. This is new use for any set of fans. For games, just they say the new deal, 60 games. They're, they didn't even complete their deal last year, was it 40 games or something? Didn't complete it, missed it like five games. If now that the deal uh, has gone through with more games, show other games. Just not sell to Rangers. Then that becomes more money for us, more money in Scottish football, and it becomes better. Competition becomes better. Celtic Rangers aren't so dominant, but don't just give it to Celtic Rangers. That's how they beat small clubs like us. Yeah. And that's how you win. Because you look at the last season when Mother were getting Europe, we were 2 0 down to Livingston and we came back 2 0. Celtic Rangers could win 1 0 away at St Mirren. Nobody cares though. But Mother have come back, came back from 2 down again, 2 0 down against Livingston to then get Europe. That's something to show on Sky, something to show on TV saying, it isn't just about Celtic Rangers, there is other competitive football in Scottish football. We're looking at the teams as well, League One, that, that Fairman were relegated last season and they're a big club and a big giants who are now in the League One and they're struggling still with it. And that, Sky just it centred Celtic Rangers. We're forgotten about Mother and St Mirren, St Johnston, clubs like that. Kamarnock were through Hamden for the first time in 10 years last night, but that wasn't cared about. Tonight, Celtic Rangers were the priority, they just put it on. Basically, I, 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 you're right, say what your first point there, mate. The TV companies control absolutely everything. As much as us as fans, we have our views and what we want football to be and what times we should be played at, we are dictated by TV companies. And I suppose if we are going to take the money, which I mean, we don't get a good deal anyway here at Scottish Football, but if we're going to take the money, we have to listen to what the TV companies want. And that's, that's kind of happening on things. As much as I hate it, I mean, I finished work at quarter past five the day I had to literally jump on the train to Glasgow here. Um, it's just the position we're in, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know, obviously the, the TV deals have never got to be good. They've, they've never really been that good up here for a long time, you know what I mean? So, uh, I, don't, I don't know where you go with that, you know what I mean, mate? I'm, I'm, I'm alright, I've got you forced into my job, I can get to make kick half times, but I, I know it doesn't suit a lot of people, so... Not really make fun of it, but it's only a good thing you get home early. On Sunday, we asked the other half of Glasgow Rangers supporters what they thought of the introduction of VAR on Friday. Now, Celtic and Rangers fans, they don't agree on a lot, but what would they agree on this? What do the Celtic fans think of VAR being introduced this week? I think we might get more decisions our way, but they can go either way, because you've seen that in the Premier League, obviously, you can actually go to bad decisions. And you're hoping that the inconsistencies down south don't come up here then we can kind of get it right. Yeah hopefully there's a good good amount of consistency and it'll be a good thing for Scottish football. I think it's time, you know, I think it's, it's the right thing. You know, 
um, hopefully we'll sort out some issues. Do you agree with that? Aye, I think we need to be keeping up with the kind of major leagues. Um, we'll probably take a while to bed in where the Scottish referees get used to it and that. But I think we need, to, we need to keep up with the big leagues such as England, France and things like that. I do not want it anywhere near Scottish football at all. just think everything that happens in Scottish football and all the noise that comes with it, I think VR is just going to... I just don't think it's going to work up here, I'm being honest with you mate, I think the things that happen in the Scottish game, the, the football that we see, the match that we see, the high intensity, that it's never going to resolve anything. Especially, I just, that's what I see in my side of things. No, I'm a, I'm, I think it's the right thing to do, you know what I mean? It stops all the moaning about behind decisions, so that's it, isn't it? So Luca, who's your favourite Celtic for? Jota. Jota? You hoping that he stays then? Don't sell him? Yeah. What do you think the score's going to be tonight? 4-1 Celtic. Oh, he's confident, I'm not liking this, I'm not liking this. I think it'll be a tough game, by the way, a good side. Five up in Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to go? I watched Motherwell play Rangers the uh, weekend there and it's a tight game and I think it'll be tight again today. I'm going to go 3-1 to Celtic. On Sunday, I mentioned that Motherwell hadn't beat Rangers in the league in 20 years and I really felt that it was there for the taking on Sunday. I just felt the players were maybe a wee bit, not scared, but they weren't really they were shooting themselves that they could go and get the result. I don't think Rangers played overly well. I thought we should have done more on the ball when we had it, but hey ho. But it really highlights a problem for me mentally. I think when you compare us to other clubs and the results against the old firm, we don't seem to do as well. I mean, we've not beat Celtic in the league since 2015 as well. And when we've come up against them, as I mentioned earlier in cup finals, they've had the better of us. So, what do Motherwell fans think the problem is? And what do we need to do to correct it? No, Rangers didn't. Um, I thought that was your best opportunity in the last 20 years to get a result against Rangers in the league. I don't know if it's if it's mentally or if it's just that we tend to sit off too much and we fail to grasp the opportunity. I, I honestly don't know where the problem lies. If it if it's with ability, if it's with confidence and ability, but we need to really start taking these chances against the old firm, especially Sunday there, and we had a good chance at Parkhead, I know, a couple of weeks ago. So fingers crossed we can make that go well tonight. I definitely do. I think. Especially with Rangers having not beaten them so long, I think Mallorca's got a bit of a mental block. When well, they walk out there and they see the blue shirts, and it's the heads uh, they sort of shrink a wee bit and that. Whereas they're just 11 guys like them, and you know, as well just having a go at them and trying to cause them problems. But I do think there is a wee bit, you know, because of no other result, it's getting in the head a wee bit. I agree. And obviously, TV companies 6:15 kick off on a Wednesday night. Here. Is it? What do we need to do to eradicate it? What do we need to, to give more, think about the fans more? Uh, I think the problem there is you, you're governed by the money that the television gives you. And you'll never get it. Football will never go back to the way it did when it was Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. There's, there's football every night of the week. Sometimes you just have to get on with it and lump it. And it's the price you pay for the amount of football you see on the television. But uh, 6, uh, 6 15 on a Wednesday night is definitely not the greatest. I don't want very many of them, that's for sure. And then I'll end it because people are trying to get in their spaces here, so I'll end it. School prediction for the night. I worry about this one. Yeah. They've started to hit form again and they thrashed Tibbs at the again. weekend, so. Five dogs, no, <laughs> I, think it, I think it could be. We could get a bit of a pasting. Uh, realistically, I, I hope Mauro will win it. I think we could get beat like 3 1, 4 1. I think it could be that bad. Cheers, Andy. No problem, mate. I think mother. When you're a mother, when your mother fans, you, you don't expect to win set beats. Oh, as, as long as you play well, you get a goal and you might get beat two one. Right, we got beat two one by Rangers there the weekend. That was a good. That's not as bad. Some mother fans. We said our score predictions were six 0 Rangers, seven 0 because they'd come back. Optimistic as always. Yeah, <laughs> but that's because they got hammered by Liverpool Aye. and they thought, right, this might be their comeback game against Mother. And we did, and we chilled up, and we got a goal back, and we were there. Kevin missed a slit sitter, but we are there, and there's nothing that we can show about that. Just, I think Celtic Rangers need to get a reality is they're never going to compete against the big clubs, and they're, they, they're, it's an easy walking league for them here. So they're stuck. In, they're stuck. Really. Just going to give my score prediction before the game starts. My head is saying. 3-0 Celtic, but my heart's saying 2-1 Motherwell, so hopefully it's my heart that's right. 
It's going back day day under the lights. Cup game here to pop up. Cannot wait. <laughs> For Celtic this time, it falls to Aaron Moy and he hits it thankfully it's right down the throat of Liam Kelly. One thing that I said when you play Celtic though is that you need to keep them quiet for the first half of the 45 minutes and then hopefully second half they'll tire. But they have started this half on fire, they've had a good few chances, hopefully we can keep it now now as it is at the moment. What a chance for Motherwell, I think if there's any time that we want to drain to the Celtic look a bit sloppy playing it out for the back and we should be activating the pressure really well and at that point it works for us and Shields gets down the flag, he cuts it across McKinstry unmarked, decides to take it first time and hits it over the bar, he's going to take a touch and no, no, pick his spot should have been one now. up, what a chance Shot across by the Seagrest and Seagrest does well, he tips it but by for the corner. Mother will start to really well, we're coming forward again. Penny wants in. Ah, it's went for the goal kick, but good stuff at Mother will. Here's hope we can get a goal and get ourselves back into the game. Many saves, Liam Kelly can make it. There was a good two in there, uh, and it breaks to Abada, and Abada does what Abada does and puts it in the top bin. And we find ourselves 2 0 down, and probably out the cup now. I'm just I'm expecting Celtic to go through the gears as it comes through with Moy. Thanks, Abada, which oh, no, it was Abada, sorry, right in the hands of Liam Kelly. But aye, it's going to be tough for us now because we don't have much on the bench to bring on the change yet. It was all Celtic, uh, there was one that Matt Penny had at 1-0 in the second half, but Celtic hit the bar, we were killing these two good saves, and then they got the goal through a ladder right before half time. 
think there's a two second tap of the ground, but the action there was early on. Matt Petty shot across the goalkeeper, took wide, and then Celtic just get control again to get the second goal. Abada whips it in 2 0, and then Hatati's goal is just for all, you know, 4 0. So the game kind of goes away from us uh, after Celtic get the second goal. And I can only give Mother what 3 out of 10 tonight. I don't think we were anywhere near good enough. I think Stevie Hamill will be looking for us to cause him more problems. I don't think we get close enough to Celtic in the midfield. I think it's too easy at times for them to play out. And yep, uh, we made it easy for them, but let's get on to the visit of Celtic. And if you're looking to look at it from their point of view, outstanding. Um, they're probably looking at this thing, it's a tricky fixture. Come at the pub park, but they dictated the game for a say about 95% here. Hattati was unbelievable, Abada unbelievable. Uh, and they do what they've been doing the team all season. Uh, we took the best that we were doing it and they put us away for now. As I say, can't have any complaints of the result. And Celtic get a 9 out of 10 for me. I don't think there was many flaws in the game at all. We go on to the referee now. Um, I don't think the referee had many big decisions to make and I thought he was spot on. It was a fairly hard game for the ref. There was no calls. I mean, there was a call here beside me for an offside for the phone call, but one, I think the mother will player touches it first and then secondly, I think the game's gone by that point, so it doesn't really impact the scoreline even if it was. So I'm going to give the referee a 7 out of 10 and as always, we look to the big point and the big discussion point for me was keeping Celtic quiet at the start. And this is going to sound very contradictory to the point that I gave Mullable, but I thought we dealt with them at the start really well. Um, first half of the hour, okay, they had a couple of chances, but we were still in the game now, now. Just if we could have got to half time now, now, maybe there, there wouldn't have been as much onus on us to come out and go for it. Second half and leave ourselves exposed in the back. So I'm going to give us, I'm going to actually give us a 6 out of 10 for that. I was going to give it a 7, but then if you don't concede right before half time, then you're in the game a bit more, aren't you? So that gives a total for the Premier Sports Cup quarter final here at Fur Park 25 out of 40. I hope you've enjoyed the last couple of vlogs that we've done here at Fur Park. We've got another big one in the Scottish Cup coming up on Friday night. So please, if you do enjoy the content on the channel, like, share, and subscribe. There's plenty more to come. See you in the next one.